Hey guys, how's it going? So in this video, we will be attempting to integrate x times cos x squared with respect to x by using two methods. First, the method of integration by parts, and at the same time realizing that one of that this term here cannot be integrated directly as it's far too complicated. So we're gonna have to do some sort of change of variable in this case. Okay, so let's consider a couple of things first here. By parts. You know, at this point, I assume we know the definition, so we're going to jump straight to it. When we look at this expression here, because we cannot integrate, we have to use some sort of uh, substitution, you know, some maybe some double angle property that you learn. So let's consider that cos 2x from the double angle formula equals, so it has many variations, but in this case, we know that it also equals 2 cos squared theta x, cos squared x minus 1. Okay, so this is the easiest one. And the reason why we choose this, because when you integrate this, this is very easily integrable. As integrating the constant inside, it goes underneath by two. So let's 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 hit this again one more time. So suppose we rearrange this to make this to make cos x uh, square the subject, we should get cos squared x equals so plus one divided by two. I can just rewrite this as half cos 2x plus 1. Okay, so here we can substitute this directly into here. So therefore, to make it look a lot nicer, I'm going to take half outside. So in one step, we're going to have half. So here to here. x cos 2x plus 1 dx. And therefore, we should have half an integral sine of x cos 2x dx, so one big bracket here, plus, and then x times 1, so integral of x dx. Okay, so this is pretty much the main integral problem we can do now. So this part is easy to do. You know, we can do integrates directly. This part we can do by parts now. So all of this transforms into this uh, typical integral. Okay, so let me just rub this out so we can integrate the first part now. Okay. Okay, so let's work directly with this. Okay, so we're going to just call this equation A. So we just care about equation A. And from equation A, we can say, we can, we can choose some variables for U and V prime. You know, V prime would just be the first derivative of V, of the value. So suppose which one is easier to differentiate directly? Of course, x. Because when you differentiate x, you know it's one, so it disappears. If you integrate this, if you differentiate this side, it's going to rotate back to sine and be a negative. So it's going to rotate the sine and differentiate again becomes cos. So you're going to have another never-ending cycle. It only makes sense to differentiate the x. So let u equal x. We can differentiate that. And hold on, camera is going to be funny. V prime equal cos 2x okay so in this case we will have to differentiate this term and then integrate this term to use the methods by parts okay so hence solving this by using solving the solution of a we're going to have the solution for this part is going to be firstly by methods of parts it will be u times v so u times the integral of this term. So x integrate this term, we're gonna get sine two x and flip this on put this underneath will be two. Okay. And we take this from of course there's no limits in this case. So okay let's just put a limit actually. Let's just say this from zero to one just for convenience sake. Zero to one. And zero to one here. Okay, so we're going to minus and then we have to integrate from the, the derivative of u times v again. Okay, so u derivative of v times the v term here. So derivative of this one is 1 we just said, so we can try 1. Or we don't even need to write it down. And the derivative of this one, or the integral of this one we just determined was sine 2x over 2 so half and go outside and put dx here so 0 to 1 okay so so far so good you know it's not too bad 
So evaluating this term here directly, we should get hmm, x sine 2x. So if you substitute 1 here, we're just going to get 1 here. We're going to sine 2 over 2. So I'm going to write in, in standard form. I'm not going to convert to numbers. So we're going to get half sine 2. Okay, that's the first term. If you substitute 0, of course, it's going to be 0 directly. So we can just leave like that. Minus. Integrate this part, we take the half outside. So the integral of sine 2x, as I said, it goes by the cos. We put a minus sign and put the 2 underneath. So we should get cos 2x over 2 in this flip sign. And we do from 0 to 1. So hence, evaluating this, this um, term here, we should get, of course, this is really okay, half sine 2 plus, now substituting 1 here. We should get cos 2, of course, or so half times half. So it'll be quarter cos 2 minus. So substituting a 0 for cos 2x. As you know about the cos rules, if you replace in trigonometry, if you put an x there, go into the um, trigonometric properties, you should actually get a, a 1. It should be on the, the maximum value of 1. So you should just get one. So half times this would just be a quarter. Yeah, and this would be the solution of A. Of course, if you're working this out without limits, this solution would just have a plus C at the end. Simple as that. Okay, so now I'm now gonna try and calculate the second equation, which is quite obvious actually. You know what? I don't need to calculate. I'll just write it. We know where it is directly. So for this part, integrating X respect to X, Comes x squared over 2. And substituting the limits, 0 and 1, of course, 0, 1 will just be half, and 0 will be nothing. So this part actually gives, just gives you half. So ultimately, the solution for this part, so let me just rub this part out again, get some space. All right, so what I really just did is just summarize the solutions for the integral of this term, which gave us half sine 2 plus quarter cos 2 minus a quarter. And of course, the integral from 0 to 1 of x is going to be half. It's pretty much just the midpoint, since it's the only term. So, hence, multiplying everything by half and, some, and uh, simplifying, we should get half times all this term. Half sine 2 plus half minus quarter is a quarter times another half is an eighth. And of course, it's an eighth too. So, we can just factorize this. Eighth cos 2. Plus, plus one, one times eight. And that's it, guys. This is how you find the integral of, well, with limits for um, x cos squared x dx. And yeah, if you need any more questions or not sure how to do any other problems, just leave a comment below and uh, suggest one, and I'll definitely get back with a video. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Adios.